Hi everybody, my name is Jaden. I'm Jason. I'm Caden. And we are the Yahoo and the Torah channel. We thank you guys very, very much for hanging out with us. We are in deep into our book, not even deep into our book. We're third chapter into the book of Revelations, Kazon, as they say. Um, and gentlemen, how are you guys doing? Good. Good. How's uh, how's the book of Revelation going for you guys? Uh, confusing. You yeah, definitely have to figure out whether it's talking about future, past, present, whether this is for us or for somebody else. Future, past, present, right, exactly. All right, so the one thing that we had yesterday um, at the very end, and let me, I guess let me take it over there first, was um, read the little bit, guys, that we have about the Morning Star from chapter 2, right. the last thing that it says. And, and I shall give him the Morning Star. That's it? That's it. Okay, and we didn't know exactly what that was exactly, and so we had Brother Glenn, and he wrote up this huge thing, one part of it with um, the answers to the Acts, where they were... Uh, People think that Gentiles only have four laws, which is crazy because we have all those same laws that everyone else has. Um, and you don't want to be a Gentile. You, you're, there's no house of Gentile. There's no house of Christian. There's no house of Mormon. There's no house of Catholic. There's a house of Yehuda and the house of Yisrael. You got to pick one of those houses. Okay, so when it talks right here about the morning star, um, this is what Brother Glenn says. Why does the Bible use morning star to refer to, refer to both Yahushua and Satan? Revolution 22.16. I, Yahushua, have sent my messenger to witness to these matters in the assemblies. I am the root and the offspring of Dawid, the bright and morning star. Revelation 2.28, verse uh, 27, starts at 27. And he shall shepherd them with a rod of iron, as the potter's vessel shall be broken to pieces. And I also have received from my father, and I shall give him the morning star. And then in Isaiah 14, 12 through 15, it says, How you have fallen from the heavens, O uh, Hailel, uh, it's, which is H1984, the morning star, Lucifer, son of the morning. You have been cut down to the ground. You have laid low the Gentiles. For you have said in your heart, let me go up to, let me go up to the heavens. Let me raise my throne above the stars of El. And let me sit in the mount of meeting on the sides of the north. Let me go up above the heights of the clouds. Let me be like the most high. But you are brought down to the grave, to the sides of the pit. In ancient times, the idea of a morning star was one of a bright star that outshines others. In Isaiah, the poetic structure of chapter 14 uses the phrase to describe the greatness of Satan prior to his fall in contrast with his evil and rebellion against Yahuwah. In Isaiah 14, 12, we read, How you are fallen from heaven, O day star, son of dawn. The King James and the New King James versions use Lucifer, son of the morning, in place of, of day star, son of dawn. The larger context of this passage is traditionally interpreted as referring to Satan as and his fall from heaven. Job 38.4, where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare if you have understanding. Who set its measurements, if you know? Or who stretched the line upon it? Upon what were its foundations sunk? Or who laid its cornerstone when the morning stars sang together and all the sons of Elohim shouted for joy? With Yahushua, the concept of the morning stars used to also note his greatness. This is clear from the other title used of him in the same verse, the root and descendant of Dawid. Of great importance is the fact that Yahushua is noted as the bright morning star. His greatness is far above all others. Satan could not stop, cause Yahushua to sin, could not stop his plans nor defeat him through death. Satan will ultimately be defeated by Yahushua and cast into the lake of fire, Revelation 20, 7 through 10. It is important to note that also using a similar idea to compare both Satan and Yahushua does not mean they are similar. The same idea of comparison is even used in the Bible with Yahushua and Satan with another idea, that of lion. In 1 Peter 5.8, Satan is described as a roaring lion who seeks to devour believers. Yet Yahushua is also called a lion, the lion of the tribe of Judah in Revelation 5.5. Both Satan and Yahushua are powerful, yet the power of the Messiah is infinitely greater. Colossians 1, 16 through 17 teaches, Because in him were created all that are in the heavens and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or rulerships or principalities or authorities, all have been created through him and for him. And all is before him, and, and in him all together hold, all hold together. John 1, 3, 5 adds, All came to be through him, and without him not even one came to be that came to be. In him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the darkness and the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Um, let's see. This one, yeah. So I'm going to leave it at that because that, so does that make sense to anybody out there? Yeah, I think so. I think that. So the morning, we didn't know exactly why he was called Morning Star or, or why, you know, we 
there's a weapon of war called the Morning Star, which we were kind of laughing at. That why is that? But that's that's not it. And so um, essentially, it's you know greatness, right? And um, I guess Satan was very great in his in his past, right? But he's he's never going to be as great as our Creator, and never as great as the Creator's Son. Okay, you guys, ready? Yep. Here we go. And for those who do not know, the again, we're in chapter three. The churches that we're talking about right here have come and they've gone. This part is all in the past. What we can glean from this is the lessons of the future where we can apply things to our lives and become better. But as far as the churches being live today, they're, they're, they're not. And, you know, the, the Catholics and all these churches, the 501c3 man-made doctrine churches, these are not assemblies where our creator lives. He's not in these temples of man-made hands. Okay. And to the messenger of the assembly in Sardis write, he who has the seven Ruach of Elohim and the seven stars says this, I know your works, that you have a name, that you are alive, but you are dead. Wake up and strengthen what remains and is about to die. For I have not found your works complete before Elohim. Remember then how you, how you have received and heard and watch and repent. If then you do not wake up, I shall come up on you as a thief and you shall not know at all what hour I have come upon you. Nevertheless, you have a few names in Sardis who have not defiled their garments and they walk with me in white because they are worthy. He who overcomes shall be dressed in white robes. And I shall by no means blot out his name from the book of Kai, but I shall confess his name before my father and before his messengers. Okay, there's a huge thing right here, right? We don't know who, the, who he's actually talking about here, but the ones who overcame or the ones who, what, what do you guys make of this, first of all? The ones who overcame, I think, are people who are, who set away from sin, who are not tempted by sin, are able to overcome and able to fight off Hostan. Right, and here is a little thing about this son of our creator, Right. He is going to be the guy. He's our uh, essentially our attorney. He's our he's our advocate when it comes to the end times. This is where we're talking about. We want him to confess our name before his father and before messengers. Now, this is a Trinity breaking verse because if Messiah Yahushua was the father, then again he just gave us a little bit of deception, right? He deceived us. Because he's not going to confess his name before his father. He's going to think about his name because he is the father, right? So we have to get all these scriptures and we have to get this stuff dialed in. We got to get rid of this satanic doctrine of the Trinity. It's just, it's a mess. And there's nowhere in scriptures, not a place that when you read scriptures all together, that you can finalize and formulate that our creator and his son are the exact same people. It, it just, it's, it doesn't say that anywhere. Okay. So... When the people that are loyal to our creator and his son, when Messiah comes, he's going to advocate for them. He's going to confess their name and he's going to also confess it before the messengers. That's a huge thing, right? How about a little esteem in front of all these, all these entities that you don't know, but that, that probably know you. And all of a sudden you get a shout out from the son of the most high. What, a, what, a, what an honor. Six, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Ruach says to the assemblies. And to the messenger of the assembly in Philadelphia, write, He who is Kodesh, he who is true, he who has the key of Dawid, he who opens and no one shuts, and shuts and no one opens, says this. Okay, um, so what is he saying? He who is true, he who has the key of Dawid. So this is Messiah saying this, right? Yeah, right, and there's like some door that, that closes and never can be opened. Right. I know your works, see? I have put before you an open door, and no one is able to shut it, that you have little power, yet have guarded my word and have not denied my name. That's a huge thing, right? A lot of, we're living in a world where not only people deny it, but the people will take the name of our creator as a superlative curse word. And um, it's, I, I, that's not even denying the name. That's, just, that's, that's even worse, so, you know, making jokes about it. Nine, C. I am giving up those of the congregation of Satan who say they are Yahudim and are not, but lie. See, I am making them come and worship before your feet and to know that I have loved you. 
Wow. What do you guys make of that? Um, when your enemies come and worship you, they come to your feet and worship you, that means they've been defeating you, which was going to defeat the people that are not following Torah. Yeah, what a, what a scene this would be. What a scene this would be. It would be amazing if we were able to partake in this this kind of a, a, a setup. That's the fake people who say they believe Yahweh, who do it, say they do the works of Yahweh, but then do evil. It's yeah. kind of people. Yeah. Ten. Because you have guarded my word of endurance, I also shall guard you from the hour of trial, which shall come upon all the world, to try those who dwell on the earth. All right, what is, what is he saying here, guys? He's saying that because if if these people here in Philadelphia were uh, guarding the Torah, he said he's going to protect them. Yes, and that's true. That's the promises we get from Yahuwah, is that if we are following the commands and we are doing as he said, we will, be, we will have protection from Yah. Yeah, absolutely. Does that mean that nothing happens, that we don't have struggles or trials or uh, days of darkness and depression and things of that nature? No, not at all. That means, that means we will still have trials, but we will be protected from Hasatan. We will be have more protection from Yah than a regular human that does not follow Torah would have. Yeah, and you know, the problem, I guess it's not a problem, but I guess the, the effects of living in the Torah is that you are going to be tested probably more than those who are not, um, simply because you are a child of the Most High and Hasatan does not want that. Okay, 11. C, I am coming speedily. Hold what you have that no one takes your crown. He who overcomes... I shall make him a supporting post in the, in the Mishkin of my Elohim. And he shall by no means go out. And I shall write on him the name of my Elohim and the name of the city of my Elohim, the renewed Jerusalem, which comes down out of the Shamaim from my Elohim and my renewed name. Wow. Okay, so this is future. There's a lot of stuff right here. Yeah, this is the future. Um, what do we make of this right here? here? Hold on. 11, what's it say? He who overcomes. Um, what do we make of this? He who overcomes, and you know, in the, how do we overcome? Number one, guys. I'd say keep believing in Yahuwah no matter what. Believe him through the trials. Fighting sin, not falling into sin. Yeah, keeping the Torah, keeping the laws, statutes, and commands. I mean, faithful to our Creator, which would mean you have faith in in Messiah Yahushua. Okay, um, and then he says, "I shall write on him the name of my Elohim." That that's How this is know? a yeah, this is a Trinity breaker, right? Because this is the Son of the Most High, and he says he's going to write on him the name of his Elohim, right? If he was Elohim, he would say, I would have my name on my chest. You would see who I am. He's not Elohim Most High, okay? And the name of the city of my Elohim, right? This is our, this is our home, right? This is, this is what we're looking for, right? When, when, a, when a city comes out of the, of the sky and sits up on top of Mount Zion and the whole mountain structure is reformed and everything is up there, um, it's going to be amazing. And that's where the whole world will come and that's where everything will be. Anything, anyone else have anything on this? This is it. No, I think you got it. Um, this, was, I, this isn't like us going to heaven. This is like the city coming down. Like you let your will be and your kingdom come. Yeah, this, this is no, there's no, there's not, a, there's no rapture. Like this, this is not the, the Christian rapture by any means, right? If you tell the Christians that they're not going to be taken off to heaven, um, they won't have any idea what you're saying. That's a scary thing to think you have comfort when there is no comfort when you think you're you're going to be saved from trials and tribulation you think you're going to be protected and when 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 you think it's time and nothing happens you're still stuck here and you have to now figure out to the end of what's really going on it's a scary thing yep you had christians in 2019 2020 2021 2022 who did absolutely nothing when the world was changed because they wait for this rapture they don't think anything's going to happen they don't think they're going to see trials and tribulations they think they're just going to make it out of this place without a scratch on them um, because that's what the man in the pulpit has told them and the lies of the doctrines of this. Okay, 13. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Ruach says to the assemblies. And to the messenger of the assembly in Laodicea, write, the amen, the trustworthy and true witness, the beginning of the creation of Yahuwah says this, I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I would that you were cold or hot. So because you are lukewarm and neither could, could nor cold nor hot, I'm going to vomit you out of my mouth. All right. Um, this is to one of these churches, right? Um, yeah, it's because it's to a church, what can we take from this? Um, we can take, we take the examples of what they did wrong and what we shouldn't do. Right. And what did they do? They were 
not with yeah they were they sound like christians they sound like modern day christians they, they were, were they were half and half out. they didn't really want to be there but they wanted to be there but they really want to deal with the world as well well christians want to be there they just don't want to keep the law statutes and commands uh, they want to do what the world does well yeah because that's what their religion has told them they can do what they want and uh obedience means absolutely nothing to to a christian okay 17 because you say rich i am and i am made rich and need none at all and do not know that you are wretched and pitiable and poor and blind and naked. I advise you to buy from me gold refined in the fire so that you become rich and white garments so that you become dressed so that the shame of your nakedness not, might not be shown and anoint your eyes with ointment so that you see. Okay, this is huge stuff right here, right? Um, what, what do we make of this, right? Part of this is we're going to be naked. Before the, our creator at some point, right? And we don't want to be naked. We want to... Uh, right. It's the rich truth. If people say I'm rich and I made myself rich, I'm saying Yahuwah blessed me like that. You'll end up naked in front of Yahuwah. Yeah, ab absolutely. You are. And, and that's the thing. is, It doesn't matter how much gold... Is that... Which dog is that? Yeah. It doesn't matter how much gold or silver you have. At the end of the day, it's all going to end up back into somebody else's hand and you're going to become a grave with... with uh, you know, in a grave with uh, worms eating, you know through your eyes and things of that nature. So you're, you're, you're done. 19, as many as I love, I reprove and discipline. So be ardent and repent. Okay, so, you know, if you are going through trials, things in your life, and you're not keeping the Torah, perhaps that's your clue. Perhaps if you're not keeping Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, and you don't have the obedience of our creator, and life is upside down, everything is going completely wild, um... Maybe it's time to look into that Torah. Maybe it's time to repent from the wickedness that, that we're into and change our life so that our creator can be happy that he reproved us and disciplined us and we learn from it. Because many people get reproved and disciplined and they don't know why and they continue on in their ways. But there is a creator out there and he is knocking and, and hearing. 20. C. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I shall come into him and dine with him and he with me. Okay, that's a huge Christian verse right there. Christians will have this all the time. This is this is this is what the Christians say. Yes, stand at my door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, what? Okay, so somebody opens the door or hears his voice. What is his voice going to say? Depart from me. It could be depart from me. But prior to that, if somebody hears the voice of Messiah, what does the voice of Messiah say? He's gonna say keep the Torah. Yeah, keep the Torah. Keep the laws, statutes, and commands of my create my father and. Um, the, you're, he's not going to come and dine if you've been belligerent in the Torah. If you are a, a sinner and you, you know, if you've had your chance to, to change and you refuse to, don't expect that you're going to have a dining spot with Messiah. 21. To him who overcomes, I shall give to sit with me on my throne, as I also overcame and sat with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Ruach says to the assemblies. Okay, let's go back up to 21 real quick. To him who overcomes, I shall give to sit on with me on my throne. He says, my throne. Then he goes, as I also over, overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. Sounds like two different people here. Do we, have, or do we have one throne or do we have two thrones? It sounds like two thrones. There's two thrones. Yeah. It sounds like the throne's big enough for both of them to sit on it. I don't think it's the same. I think there's two separate thrones. I think it, yeah, it's two separate thrones here, but I think uh, he, sat, he sat on his father at some point. Like. Maybe. He sat down there, but he also it overcame and sat with my father on his throne. It sounds... Um, it sounds like they have two separate thrones or that you, they are without a shadow of a doubt, two separate entities. And, um, I guess if nobody gets anything else from that, um, please break that Trinity, um, deception. It is, it is a, a curse. It is very, very evil. And it breaks the heart of our creator because he is a jealous L and he wants us and he wants our dedication. He wants our loyalty. He wants our hearts. He wants our minds. He doesn't want to share this with anyone else. So, guys, with that, um, thank you guys very, very much. Much love to everybody out there. We will see you again soon. All right. Shalom. Shalom.